Hi, I'd like to uh, use this video to summarize uh, some tips for using proportions to uh, solve ratio problems. So we'll be moving through these um, pretty quickly, just some general ideas uh, and tips for, uh, for using working with proportions. Let's take a look at this first problem. At Al's Catering Service, they often make a large batch of fruit salad. The ratio of cups to of apples to cups of oranges in the recipe is 8 to 5. If they use 15 cups of oranges, how many cups of apples should they use? A proportion is something that helps us just to organize the information and organize our thinking. So uh, I like to begin with some labels so that I know what is in my proportion. In this case, we're talking cups of apples and oranges. So I would label apples and oranges. In a proportional relationship it doesn't matter which is the numerator and which is the denominator. Uh, the numbers will work out because of the ratios and the, and the relationship between them. We're told that the ratio of apples to oranges is 8 to 5. A proportion, remember, is two equivalent ratios. So that's my first ratio. The second ratio will have some of the information, but not all of it. I know that there are 15 cups of oranges. And I'm wondering is what's the amount of apples that goes with that amount of oranges. So we've got our labels. We've got a pair of numbers that are related to each other. The uh, ratio of apples to oranges is 8 to 5. And then I have another ratio which is partially filled in and I'm looking for this number here. Well, just looking at uh, the uh, two ratios as if they were equivalent fractions, which uh, essentially they are, uh, I find a relationship just like the kind of relationship that you would find between equivalent fractions. Here I notice that 5 times 3 would give me 15. And so I know that I would want to multiply 8 times 3 and that means that x is going to be equal to 24. And actually go ahead and we'll just remove this x here and we'll fill that in just like we would with an equivalent fraction. So, I want to label the answer, x is equal to 12 cups of apples. Great. If they only use two cups of apples, how many cups of oranges should they use? Alright, so we're going to set up our labels here. Apples, oranges, I know that those are in the ratio always of 8 to 5. And now I have two cups of apples, and so that will go up here. That's the usefulness of the labels, as they remind you. The amount of apples always goes up in the numerator, the way we've got it set up, and oranges is going to go in the denominator. And this is the number that I'm looking for here. Well, again, using just some uh, the relationship uh, of equivalent fractions, I notice that if I divide by 4, 8 divided by 4 gives me the 2, so I need to divide the quantity of oranges by 4 as well. Now I've got a fractional answer, but that's fine. I can handle that. 5 divided by 4 is equal to 5 divided by 4. Problem is the answer. And that is 5 fourths, so that gives me 1 and 1 fourth cups of oranges. Okay. Look at a couple more problems. Stephanie can run 5 miles per hour. How long will it take her to run 8 miles? So in this problem, the quantities that we're measuring are miles and 
hours. So I'll go ahead and set up my proportion. Miles. Hours. I know that there are five miles. And it may not be obvious right away what number goes here. This is five miles and there's actually no number written there. But it's implying that it's five miles per hour, five miles in one hour. So five miles is what she runs in a single hour, in just one hour. So five goes with one. Eight miles is the distance that she runs and how long, that's the missing amount. That's the one that I don't know. Now this problem is not a clear relationship, five and eight. Uh, it's not immediately obvious to me what I'm gonna multiply five by in order to get eight. But if I think about it for a second, five times something equals eight, that means eight divided by five would be that thing. Eight divided by five is just eight-fifths. So that means I need to multiply by eight-fifths to get eight. And I would want to multiply one by eight-fifths to get eight-fifths. So in this case, x is equal to eight-fifths. which is equal to one and three-fifths. And what are we talking about? We're talking about hours. But let's say that that is something that is, um, uh, maybe that's something that is a little tricky, or you might even have a situation where the numbers, uh, the relationship between the numbers are is even less obvious. There's one other tool that we can use uh, to solve proportions in addition to the um, equivalent fraction idea, multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same thing. It costs $12.85 to buy a piece of salmon that weighs 18 ounces. How much would it cost to buy 25 ounces of salmon? So what am I measuring in this problem? I have some dollar amounts and I have the weight of the salmon that's in ounces. So this is going to be dollars or sometimes I'll write cost and ounces. We know that it's 12.85 for 18 ounces. And then I know that I am interested in 25 ounces of salmon and I want to know what this is. Well in order to solve this we can use something that's called the cross product. And I've got another video which explains the cross product in a little bit more detail and where it comes from. But here's where how the cross product works. Product is multiplication, and cross is uh, a cross. In this case, it's because we multiply this, and we multiply these two numbers together. So this times 18 times x, and 1285 times 25, we should get the same answer when we do both of those multiplications. So 18x should equal 25 times 1285. So if I grab my calculator here to go ahead and do that, this is one where I would go ahead and I would go to a calculator. So I'll pull mine out here. And I'm going to do 25 times 12.85 and that is equal to 321.25 that's what 18x is equal to and I'm going to divide by 18 
to solve that equation for x. x is equal to 17 point, and since we're talking dollars and cents, I will round off to the nearest penny, $17.85. So when you're using the cross product, you're going to multiply one pair of numbers together to get an answer and divide by the third number to find the fourth number uh, as part of the proportion. And that's something that can be really useful to solve all sorts of proportions. So, using proportions, step one, write your proportion correctly. Use the labels to help you get the numbers in the right place. Step two, solving that, you have a couple of options. You can use relationships uh, of equivalent fractions, how the numerators and denominators, how the denominators are related to each other and how the numerators are related to each other. Multiply or divide by the same number, uh, top and bottom. Or you can use this cross product multiply across, get the product, divide by the third number to find the missing fourth number.